If you're speaking to a football fan, you will have two types. You hate Jose Mourinho or you just love him. You cannot have a neutral feeling towards him. I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And I don't want to be in big trouble. Jose Mourinho is a football manager, widely regarded as one of the best coaches in the game. He has led numerous top European teams to national and European honours. He is also renowned for his acerbic and self-confident style. He is often referred to as the special one, a nickname to describe his unique character and strong track record. Mourinho is considered an excellent tactician and has sometimes been criticised for emphasising defensive strengths rather than encouraging attacking play. However, Mourinho is unmoved by criticism, arguing the job of the manager is to win. During his career, Mourinho has often been involved in personal spats with other managers, referees and members of the media. He is not afraid to speak his mind, even if it upsets others. Few attributes are more important to success than arrogance. Arrogance can translate into confidence in oneself, can breed confidence in one's followers and can give one the psychological edge over one's foes. Most successful men and women have some level of arrogance. But is Jose Mourinho the god of arrogance? They say that he has so much arrogance that he could share it out to all the geeks in every high school in the Americas and still have enough to make him one of the greatest football managers in the world. And he is most certainly that. Jose Mourinho was born in Portugal on January 26th, 1963. From a young age, his mother encouraged him to aim for success in all his endeavours. His father was a professional goalkeeper. Because of this, Mourinho always had a keen interest in football. When his father moved on to coaching, Mourinho followed his lead. He began to study opposing teams and game tactics relentlessly. After being a school coach for a few years, Mourinho's dream was to go into professional coaching. He looked for inroads into his desired career. He ended up working as an interpreter for the famous football coach Sir Bobby Robson. Mourinho developed a friendship with Robson and discussed football tactics and strategies, sometimes late into the night. He then followed Robson across several clubs, from Sporting to FC Porto and Barcelona. Why is Jose Mourinho hated so much by fans? It's because of his straight-faced attitude and unbiased answers. He is never shy to question his own team's principles and playing style, if it doesn't seem appropriate to him. In short, he has a character and personality everybody wants to possess. That explains the hatred. What makes you a Jose Mourinho fan? The passion, charisma and the confidence in his abilities. He demands results and grinds them out of nowhere. If you need to know how it feels to win, you need him. He will give you during his tenure how it is to be a champion. He is a man with a plan. The way he plans the defence and shape of the team for his infamous park the bus tactics. One of the most effective tactics in football which not many have been able to emulate. The sheer confidence and determination shown by him is itself a sole reason to be a fan of him. But, despite winning eight league titles and five European trophies in his career, when Mourinho is brought into conversation, it's usually dominated by his controversial moments and tactics. The special one. Of the bottle. I, must, I think I'm a special one. Following his record-breaking spell at Porto, Mourinho's Champions League success meant he was ready for a step up. At first, Mourinho looked favourite for the Liverpool job, but after discussions with new Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich, Mourinho pledged his future to the London side. After the win over Sir Alex Ferguson the previous year, many wondered whether his new team could challenge Manchester United at the top of the Premier League. After his opening press conference, nobody doubted it. Unbeknownst to him at the time, the words that Mourinho used that day would be used to shape his entire managerial career. The special one quickly became one of the most talked about figures in English soccer, even more so when he once again backed up his statement and won Chelsea the Premier League title in back-to-back -back years. 
before returning in the 2014-15 season and winning the title again. Wenger spat. You know, he is a specialist in failure. Uh, I'm not. When taking charge at Chelsea, Mourinho made it very clear that he was there to take over. But to do so, he had to dethrone London rivals Arsenal. Inevitably, Mourinho clashed with Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger multiple times during his reign at Chelsea. Even on the pitch, Mourinho's rigid, resolute and physical teams were a stark contrast to the flair and skill that encapsulated Wenger's Arsenal side. The narrative of red versus blue in London almost wrote itself. But in typical fashion, Mourinho couldn't help but add fuel to the flame, constantly berating his colleague in the press. The duo repeatedly went back and forth at one another, providing soap opera drama before the matches had even kicked off. In one interview, Mourinho famously referred to Wenger as a specialist in failure, claiming that if he had gone eight years trophyless just as Wenger had, he would leave and not come back. Frankly, the war of words between the two greats was just as enticing as their clashes on the pitch. But just as much as the feud was ugly, it was a masterclass of entertainment. So... The Three Finger Salute Right from the off in his third season at Old Trafford, things looked to be going wrong for Mourinho. In pre-season, he fell out with striker Anthony Marshall as the striker flew home from their tour in the USA for the birth of his son, and he squabbled with the board over transfers. He was also part of a poor start to the season, and that continued with a 3-0 home defeat to Tottenham. Mourinho was defiant in his post-match press conference though. Asked about the performance, he held up three fingers to a journalist and said, Do you know what this means? What was the score? It means 3-0, but also three Premier League titles that I've won. I've won more titles alone than the rest of the managers in this league combined. Three titles for me and two for the other 19. He then left the room shouting, Respect! 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 Respect, man! Respect! 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 Intentional red cards. If the previous story didn't prove it already, Mourinho will do whatever he possibly can to make his team succeed. This was seemingly the case for his Real Madrid side in 2010, when he appeared to instruct Sergio Ramos and Xabi Alonso to pick up intentional red cards. In their penultimate match of the Champions League group stage, Mourinho's Madrid side were cruising 4-0 against Ajax and had already qualified for the knockout stages. Many managers would be content with the win and the performance, but Mourinho was busy thinking ahead. Alonso and Ramos were influential in the Madrid side, and their pre-existing bookings threatened their chances of playing in the knockout fixtures. Therefore, the only possible solution to wipe their slate clean in time for the fixtures was to have them suffer a red card. With the bigger picture in his mind, Mourinho, both ingeniously and outrageously, appeared to order his players to receive intentional red cards. Silencing the Liverpool fans It didn't take Mourinho long to reach his first final as Chelsea manager, making the Carling Cup final in 2005, where they met Liverpool in Cardiff. The Reds took an early lead through John Arnrisa and held on to this lead until deep into the second half. The Blues equaliser came in the 80th minute, an own goal from Steven Gerrard, a man who had been regularly linked with the move to Chelsea. Mourinho celebrated in his usual style, turning to the Liverpool fans, raising his finger and making a shushing motion. He was subsequently sent to the stands, from where he saw his side score twice in extra time to win his first trophy in English football. He later said that his gesture was aimed at the media and not the Liverpool fans but that seems rather unlikely. Handcuff me. In 2010, while Barca went to Milan, he earned himself a three-match ban for his behavior towards Serie A officials. Mourinho saw both Walter Samuel and Ivan Cordoba be dismissed before making a handcuffed gesture to cameras 
emphasizing his sense of victimization, celebrating on the new Camp pitch. In his second season with Inter Milan, Mourinho guided them to the semi-finals, where they were drawn with Barcelona. His side produced a superb performance in the first leg at the San Siro, winning 3-1. The second leg was a much grittier, cagey game, with Inter reduced to 10 men within half an hour, thanks to Diago Motta's controversial sending off. However, despite Gerard Peake's goal, Inter held on to win 3-2 on aggregate. At the full-time whistle, Mourinho charged across the pitch in the direction of the Inter fans, arms aloft, briefly grappling with Barcelona goalkeeper Victor Valdez as he looked to join the celebrations. He later said that it was the most beautiful defeat of my life. So tell us, what do you think of Jose Mourinho? For more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Any more questions? Merry Christmas, eh?